Good afternoon, everybody. Hope you are all well after the holidays and welcome back to our Marketing Club webinar series. We've got a fantastic session for you today on the Metaverse with Virginia Bray of Marketing Fusion and Ben Fryer from Diverse Interactive. Virginia very kindly delivered one of our webinars last year on MetaHumans, which was absolutely fascinating. So it's an absolute pleasure to have her back with us again for today's session. If you watched any of our Marketing Club webinars before, then you'll know how this works. But for those joining us for the first time today, I'll very quickly give you some info about the session, how you can submit your questions for the Q&A and where to go if you want to watch the session again. So we'll be hearing from Virginia and Ben for around 45 minutes. We'll then move to a 10 to 15 minute Q&A to answer some of your questions. You'll be able to post your questions for the Q&A at any time during the session by clicking on the question mark you'll see on screen. If you'd like to share any thoughts about today's webinar on the socials, you can use the hashtag CIM events. We'd love to see your comments, so we'll pop the hashtag up again after Virginia and Ben have finished their presentations. So before we head into the presentation, I'll just quickly explain what the Marketing Club is. It was created primarily to help students get the most from their CIM accredited degree and prepare them for a career in marketing. Although the Marketing Club is designed for students, CIM members and other marketing practitioners are also welcome to attend the sessions. For the uninitiated, the CIM accredited degree program enables students to gain a professional marketing qualification by taking advantage of the exemptions the accredited degree provides. So if you're a university student, you can sign up now to receive the Marketing Club newsletter. All you need to do is take a photo of the QR code on screen. Alternatively, you can hop onto our website and find it within the qualifications drop down menu. Each edition of the newsletter will provide you with content designed to support your studies and actively manage your professional development by keeping you up to date with the latest trends, innovations and concepts in the marketing industry. So it really is worth taking a look and signing up. We'll pop the QR code up again a little later. So don't worry if you haven't had a chance to capture it yet. Okay, so I'd like to introduce our guest speakers on today's session, Virginia and Ben. If you want to turn your webcams on, I'll pass things over to you and the floor is yours when you're ready. Thanks so much, Phil, that's very kind of you. Hi, Ben. <coughs> so, yeah, so um, really, really thrilled to be here and to have an opportunity to uh, to share some insights and some um, uh, some experiences of uh, Metaverse and, and beyond. So brief brief background to myself. Um, first, um, I come from a probably more of a traditional marketing background. So uh, my business, um, Marketing Fusion, is a, is a content marketing agency and consultancy, um, and we work with B2B tech and SaaS clients. Um, ben, did you want to make an introduction to yourself? Yeah, so I run a digital experience agency and we specialize in, I guess, sort of helping brands and enterprises using transformative technologies. So a lot of immersive technology, AR, VR, those types of things. And really, I guess we sort of lead with building great content and great experiences but built on kind of sound cutting edge technology. And obviously the metaverse is part of that journey for us. So excited to talk about it. Fantastic. So. Briefly, just to um, share with you the agenda, which I'm hoping will come up. Um, but let me just click on that again. There we go. Um, yeah, just a, obviously a little bit about uh, introduction to us. Um, and then the agenda is really very much, um, sorry, this is where I get slightly trigger happy. Uh, myself, um, in the first instance, want to put a little bit of a sort of positioning around this so um, you know for marketers where do we see the opportunities and, and the challenges uh, to be honest so uh, there's, there's a huge amount of things changing at the moment um, and then we're going to do a deep dive into Ben's um, massive and considerable insights into what's happening in the metaverse what's happening with meta humans and in a bit of a Q&A so I think it's a, a great opportunity to have a real expert in the room to uh, to share his uh, his knowledge and, and experiences um, and then of course we'll move on to the the question and answer sessions uh, with yourselves um, so just to to start off with we thought it would be really helpful to just do a quick poll um, so um, Lisa in the background if you could maybe fire that one up we just love to understand where people are in their marketing journeys um, more from the perspective of making sure that we are hopefully addressing 
uh, things at the right level um, for you and you know appreciate that not everybody's um, you know uh, can, can easily fit into one of these categories but it just gives us an insight um, and one of the other things I wanted to just mention is that um, during the course of today you'll see some some great images from uh, some of the um, experiences and so on that that we wanted to sort of share with you um, but it's a little bit difficult to do it too interactively and, and share video and so on so we do have on some of our slides a QR code that uh, will take you to a landing page of, of ours which will enable us to um, if, if you were to go to that page and, and sign uh, sign up to receive information we can share some of those insights further with you uh, so do please feel free to do that at any point it's on a couple of the slides towards the uh, the end of the session so what are we saying so ah we've got quite an interesting mix actually I was kind of assuming it was going to be more towards the the student level but there's quite a, a significant uh, nearly half of you are senior level marketers so that's that's fascinating so I'm, I'm really excited about that that means that we've got an opportunity really to talk about some of the things that are meaningfully happening in the in the marketing world um, and yeah looking forward to making this hopefully a, a really useful session for everybody Cool, thanks Lise. Um, so yeah, just in order to um, uh, set the ball uh, rolling, um, just wanted to sort of, I suppose, explain a little bit of how we see um, the, the world at the moment. Um, and it's, you know, th this is not gonna be news particularly to any people that are in the, uh, the marketing profession. So we're under huge amount of pressures at the moment and, um, you know, really the, the content explosion the things that are happening in in the world particularly around some of the ai tools that are now coming um becoming available and, and becoming more widely used it's just going to drive this massive explosion of content so content is is not um it, it it just one of the challenges that we sort of certainly see um from that is is the need to create memorable experiences and to 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 create ways and means of standing out from that um, you know that the masses um whether that's through more sort of visual and video content because obviously that's important we're all video consumers these days in our consumer lives in our business world and so on um and we're all looking for that more sort of personalized and relevant message um, you know we've come to expect it it's 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 how we expect to interact but that's a huge challenge um and the other you know common thread around um you know what we're what we're trying to do is deliver authenticity so not just creating um you know a bland vanilla message or trying to be something inauthentic that we're not um, being able to enable our um, potential buyers uh, to, to engage with us in the places and the ways that they want to do that and that means you know in the right language in the right um, cultural sort of um, tone of voice and so on um, and the whole sort of um, you know premise around um, you know this the, the seller the brand being in control I think is, is slightly moved on as well so buyers are now very much driving this uh, this journey and this engagement with us um, at the same time we're seeing a huge volume of changes that are happening both from a sort of technology and trends point of view so whether that's through the advent of sort of real-time um, virtual production new video technologies um, whether it's through AI um, the advent of, of virtual influencers that we'll maybe go into to touch on a little bit later or the metaverse I could add a you know 10 more things to this list cryptocurrency um, you know whether it's a sort of web 3.0 or all of the new sort of I suppose um, things that are changing are, are kind of giving us that sort of that crazy sort of you know um, mixture of, of um, you know, things that we need to be across and be on top of and opportunities um, to, to create those more meaningful environments and we kind of see this as a bit of a perfect storm really um, so if you bring together the things that we're expected to do and also the new technologies that are available it's that sort of opportunity to leverage the, that new technology and trends um, in order to meet some of the challenges and, and create opportunities um, so we're looking very much to sort of you know showcase some of the ways in which um, you know we can all start to do that as marketers and see the opportunities um, and that's very much 
something that uh, that Ben's going to help us to, to shed some light on. Um, so before we dive into um, Ben's session, I just wanted to um, invite you to uh, a next poll really, which is just to understand a little bit about everyone's experience of the metaverse. So if Lise, if you could put that one up, it's a bit of a bit of a sort of, you know, blunt <laughs> uh, sort of uh, way of representing yourself. But yeah, we will just look to get us, give us a bit of a gauge as to what everyone's experience is uh, in that instance. And um, just obviously, you know, whilst we're sort of starting to to get that information back, I think, Ben, the metaverse is a term that's been around for, for quite some while, hasn't it? Yeah, can, you recall, right, yeah. can you recall when you first Ooh. came well, across I that? Think, uh, yeah, it could be. I think a lot of people think it was sort of when Meta sort of got on the bandwagon, but I think, um, oh, it could be at least sort of 10 years ago. I mean, it, it sort of originated actually in a sci-fi novel. So, it, um, mm. you know, it's it's been sort of in the mindset for a while and it sort of comes and goes, but I think, yeah, it's sort of really just sort of become a thing now that we're all having to think about more about. Definitely, yeah. I think it's uh, yeah. There's some some very early sort of origins, weren't there, in the in the sort of sci-fi novels yeah. and so on. Um, so, okie dokie. So we've got a lot of people who are uh, at the complete novice end. So, 73% of you saying that, and a few doublers and and some experienced people as well. So, I think that's great. It's an opportunity, really, to just sort of you know maybe sow a few seeds and then start to sort of share some. Uh, examples of where this is starting to uh, to take take shape. Cool. Thank you very much. Um, so, right, I guess the starting point for this um, Q and A with with Ben. Um, obviously, as I said, Ben's got a huge amount of experience, and his business is is very much geared around creating these ex, um, immersive experiences. So, we're really uh, pleasure to have you to, uh, to to talk to you today about this, Ben, and and, and uh, create um, share your insights. Um, and I guess the start to sort of you know get the ball rolling is so. Let, let's sort of set the scene for this. So, what what is the metaverse? What? How would you describe it? So, I think let's yeah, start with a big question because I think this yeah. this is probably the one you get asked the most. So, yeah. um, I mean, I think what what doesn't help this probably probably should start that you know there isn't actually an agreed definition of the metaverse, so that sort of makes it slightly difficult. But um, you know, I like to sort of, you know sort of go with my sort of definition, and, and I guess that's really sort of come from the space we operate in, and what I find is probably the most useful definition, I guess, when you're sort of adopting the metaverse and sort of moving into that space. Um, so I don't know, sort of maybe sort of let people sort of heard the term XR. Um, that's the sort of term we use that kind of encompasses, I guess, all immersive technologies, AR, mixed reality, virtual reality. Um, and it's really sort of those technologies are sort of coming together with the internet. So it's this kind of sort of convergence of technologies. And what that's giving rise to is what we call these sort of persistent virtual realities. So, you know, virtual reality doesn't necessarily have to be you know, used on a VR headset, you know, you're probably sort of familiar with the games, things like Fortnite, you know, and, and these these realities are sort of having this connectivity where they sort of exist. And you sort of enter those realities and start using them. Um, and really, so there's this sort of thing like, is it here? Is it around? And, and I think it certainly is. It's just sort of entering our lives, like all good tech on this sort of slow journey, you know, how much time are we sort of play you know already sort of playing in these sort of games like minecraft and road blocks and things like that so it's sort of entering our lives and there's this sort of so it's definitely here and there's the things we can do now to engage with it but there's also this sort of slightly longer journey you know this what this really is becoming is the spatial in internet so this is sort mm -hmm. of like this is like the next generation of the internet this is um spatial content and and us being able to consume that and that's where you sort of get this thing around sort of standards and people talking about that and then that sort of you know is it here and you know that that's kind of the end goal really is that this is sort of standardized and just like you sort of deliver websites at the moment you know these sort mm. of virtual realities become the next website in a way so it's not one big thing it's a whole series of things at the moment and then eventually those are all going to come that's together it. it's, it's all these yeah. technologies coming together to sort of give us the metaverse 
Yeah, absolutely. Shall I? I've got a couple of um, images that you've asked um, that you put together. So, so the internet. I mean, people have talked about the internet in 3D, haven't they? And I think that's a nice way of kind of visualising it. So some of these examples that you're sharing with us are are, are good ones of, uh, of those maybe to just sort of chat to. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of sort of examples. I mean, you know, there's a few on here. There's some of the sort of platforms represented that you've got sort of the um, sort of web free platforms. I think we've probably sort of clarify that one in a second. But, um, you know, things mm. like the Central Land Sandbox, and mm. then you sort of got some of the more games ones, you know, Roblox, um, and then the sort of, you know, enterprise sort of focus ones, things like Facebook Horizon. So there's a lot of sort of platforms coming together and, and you know, sort of common one I sort of get asked actually, you know, well, why is the sort of, you know, is this tech looks a little bit perhaps behind some of the, the sort of mm. games and things at the moment, but actually, yeah, you know, we're just sort of entering this, this space and these, just every day these sort of platforms are getting better and better looking and you know there's mm. you know sort of, I'm sure sort of the gamers and things are sort of familiar with how good games are you know this sort of realities are getting so good now and it's, it's just we're on that journey now so yeah really really interesting and what so you, you mentioned web threes um just then so what's so what's the difference because it feels like they're sort of tied together but actually Maybe that's yeah. What's Web three? And it what's is. Not it's web quite. Three? It can again. It can be quite challenging. There's a lot of t sort of tech sort of moving around and a lot of components really. But um, I, re I really sort of I like to sort of keep Web three sort of separate from the metaverse. It you know Web three sort of came out of you know really sort of the blockchain world and this sort of, you know decentralized movement that mm. that space um, and that's sort of where the you know the term was coined um, and. But the reason it sort of gets combined with the metaverse is it, it produces very, you know, it gives us quite useful features, you know, in, in the metaverse, things like ownership, you know, the, the decentralized sort of concepts, you know, mm. they're very useful when you're in these virtual realities, you know, who needs to own what, <laughs> these, these types of things, you <laughs> of know, course. virtual goods, all these sort of things that, ex that exist in the metaverse. So, so it provides a sort of useful mechanic and, and I think you know we, we've got to really sort of see you know where, where that journey takes us at the moment I think you know sort of sort of last year I think a lot of brands you know a few some sort of went into the metaverse through that space and I think it can be quite hard you, you've got to be quite careful you know that it can actually be a barrier to entry at the moment you know this, this metaverse for me is really about this sort of XR technology and this, this sort of mm. spatial these virtual realities. You, you, mm. There's no reason to sort of have to sort of you know get asked it quite a lot actually. You know, do I need to mint an NFT to um, use a method? Yeah. yeah, no, that's yeah, that's it. You, you don't need to. I mean, you know, you just got to really be careful around that application. You know, you know, sometimes there's great reasons to mint an NFT. I think really mm. it's sort of brands that did well in that was you know it's, it's really where your markets someone who understands crypto so sort of luxury brands so sort of yeah. those types of people you know you, you can make money but I think it is just sort of being careful with that that sort of how you sort of adopt it at the moment and that that also sort of brings back the, the sort of question that you touched on there which is knowing your brand and knowing your customer and knowing where they're going to be so it 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 does bring it back yeah to basic it's, it's those basics it's it? some sort of fundamental yeah. things and it is it's very easy to sort of get excited by all the, all the shiny away. tech and things. Absolutely. It's a, it's a big thing for sort of marketing, you know, it's all, all in it, but it is, you just have to have sort of step back a little bit and just, you know, sound each other. Is, is that the right move? You know, work with experts, you know, that, that, that kind mm. of thing. Mm, no, definitely so. And, you know, just just also seeing what's happening with some of the gaming um, platforms and the sheer volumes of audiences that they've got there. Um, but obviously that's a particular that's audience type that some people might want to reach, but not necessarily everybody. But um, yeah, definitely. Cool. So just sort of moving on, um, really, just to explore a little bit more in terms of um, what what that looks like. So there's obviously a huge, a huge amount of hype around uh, around the metaverse, around Web3 and around all of those sort of associated technologies. Um, and in fact, I think, you know, they've predicted, isn't it, McKinsey predicts that it could reach 5 trillion by 2030, which is the size of Japan's economy. I think that's one of the stats that gets bandied around in this um, in this kind of context. So I just wonder what your thinking is around that in terms of are we still at the early adopter stage? Where do you think we're at in the 
in the cycle. Sure. I think we sort of almost touched on it just there, you know, this is all about the hype. I mean, actually, if you sort of go on to the next next slide. Um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so I think this is sort of useful. I don't know sort of how many people have probably seen various versions of this <clears throat> kind of technology curve. And I think it is, it's one of those sort of texts where it's, there's a lot of debate, you know, where are we on this this journey? And I think a lot of people sort of feel like, oh, yeah, maybe we just last year was that, that big sort of innovation trigger and we've gone up the curve and perhaps we're sort of going down a little bit at the moment and sort of, you know, AI, I think is this year's big big hype so um mm. but you know i actually like to look at this on perhaps sort of a, a slightly different time scale i think it was quite interesting you know we, we started and when i started up our agency we came out a sort of creative agency to really sort of specialize in these sort of immersive technologies and i sort of feel you know that was sort of eight years ago and we had this sort of innovation trigger back then in a way where you know this was sort of virtual reality coming in lots of little sort of <clears throat> brands of headsets and and yeah. you know and then people were sort of trying to work out there's you know a lot of people weren't aware of it as well as like well, how can i use this stuff you know what, what is it what is vr mm. and actually you know if you sort of shoot forward to today you know the the knowledge is a lot better you know most people i think sort of understand ar or vr or have sort of some concept mm. Of mm -hmm. what that means there's also been quite a long journey in working out how to use these technologies you know how to build mm -hmm. great experiences what not to do yeah. what to do yeah. um and i think you know you look at the players involved as well you know you know facebook rebranding mm -hmm. of meta that really kind of gone in yeah and actually you know perhaps we we're sort of on that <laughs> You know that sort of slope of enlightenment actually perhaps this is our journey now where i think we're coming out sort of it into the yeah yeah it's kind of reached this point right it, it can make a difference it's valuable it's entering our lives um and i think that's where we sort of start to, to see the good in these texts so you know perhaps we're you know it's one of those fun things you know where, where are we what resolution are mm. we looking at the hype at the moment um but you know i think we all know you know over the next sort of 10 years you know this sort of journey into the spatial internet 3d mm. content becoming i think that's just going to become the norm you know like yeah. we sort of worry about websites and videos and things i think sort of having your products you know as sort of digital twins making sure you've got that mm. content and you're, you're sort of in the right virtual realities and on the right platforms so you know that, that that's sort of really where we're heading at the moment for sure and there's obviously some big brands that you've represented on this um graphic here who are putting some considerable investment into into this uh yeah. new area yeah. so so that obviously goes with uh goes with you know goes to sort of prove i suppose that there's uh, there's some new stuff coming down track interesting um and obviously we were also going to um share some examples so let me just move on to the next slide i think um because i asked you to sort of maybe who do you think is doing this well so we saw we saw a couple of ones on the on the last slide i don't know if you wanted to add anything to the the context of any of those examples that you've picked um or did you just I mean, want to share? We've, got the, we've got the next the next slide i think a brand that's actually they, i think this Nike's done really really well over the last year and I, I think you know a lot of brands you know that were sort of issues sort of going into some of these sort of web free focused platforms relying on sort of nfts and, that, and i think nike's actually it does feel like they've sat there and sort of looked at things and actually you know before i go and do this let's 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 think about this and um they've got a really big presence in roadblocks at the moment called nike land which i think is a really nice move and what what they've done well is they was that actually well, where's my customers what's what's my audience and how do i sort of target them that, that that sort of thought process and you know roadblocks is is the sort of younger audience um that you know they put that on their website you know they're, they're sort of targeting that audience um mm. and they've, they've built a really good experience you know that again that's an, another sort of common thing place where people go wrong it's like oh, we'll, we'll just try the tech we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes and actually you have to be really careful when you do that you know you have to build enough of an experience to kind of make it worthwhile you know i've seen so many mm. people sort of over the years sort of new technology sort of trying it out or oh, will, will that work but you 
yeah, you, you, feel, you can almost sort of get burnt and actually not realise that potential. And I think, you know, Nike's built this great experience. They're, they're not sort of sat there trying to force virtual goods down your throat, which I think is something I've seen some brands doing. It, you know, the, mm. there's lots of free stuff. They've built great sort of gaming experience. There is a shop in it, of course, but, you know, it, it's not sort of too down throat. It, it's, it's brand awareness. It's, you know, you've got all the sort of, Roblox users walking around in Nike Nike trainers now, and and it's sort of you yeah. know I think as well the numbers are there. You know this was the other thing they did well they found the audience. So mm. I think sort of the time I checked sort of a couple of days ago put a post out on this, but um there was um you know I think it's thirty million users currently visited this experience. That's massive, and, isn't it? It's huge. Yeah, it's it's really good, and and you know but I mean and actually you look at the Roblox platform, and I think that's got about sort of forty million daily active yeah. users so it, but yeah. this is it this is big stuff you know these platforms are really really hitting a, a large number of users now and there's a lot of space for sort of brands to get involved yeah and then i guess sort of on the other side of this visual actually the other thing they did they were I think quite smart around as well was this is sort of that sort of move into the sort of web free nft space and again mm -hmm. i don't know if anyone's sort of called porsche got quite a lot of bad press um, I think last week around sort of how they approached NFTs and you know Nike sort of they sort of separate themselves a little bit. Um, they um, brought this brand who sort of already existed in the Web3 community called Artifact. They sort of established mm -hmm. themselves a bit. They understand the, the tech. They were sort of trendy in that space. And again, it's sort of it's almost like this sort of sub brand approach. Sort of okay, mm -hmm. you know, we're doing virtual shoes uh, that was something that again they they did do other sort of content but they, they did have a sort of bit of a thing for sort of obviously there's the connection sort of creating these sort of virtual goods virtual trainers as nfts and i think it was a smart move you know it, it sort of they, you know they did it in a cool way i guess in the, in the sort of yeah. web free world and, and they got that sort of backing <clears throat> from that that kind of community really Mm -mm. And you can see here that there's sort of a blend between the offline world and the online world. It sounds like they're sort of starting to. Yeah, I mean that's another thing. Actually, it's a good point. They're sort of mixing this, some of their sort of shoes now. They're, they're sort of tapping into the bow, so you can buy a shoe, and it's got a sort of virtual digital representation mm -hmm. NFT of it. You sort of get with the shoes. So. <laughs> Who knew? And I thought trainers were just to like put on your feet and go walking in, but hey, that's that's just me. <laughs> Obviously not in their target demographic, I have to say. That's the yeah. uh, that's the other thing, isn't it? Um, yeah, really interesting. I mean, there's there's massive um, potential here, and obviously, um, you know, there's there's definitely sort of um, you know ways in which an audience or a brand like Nike is taking its audience and, and mapping onto that so they're actually doing it the right way around and you said that there's some people that are probably doing it just for the sake of um you know of it of of having some cool tech but obviously the people that are utilizing it in a in a way that gives us kind of some more um you know that, that meets the moment meets the need of the of the particular target audience it's really interesting cool okay um just moving on um just because it's something that we've touched on and been quite closely involved in and it's something that I know you've got an interest in as well so digital humans obviously have you know play a part in the in the metaverse tell us a little bit about that and and you know what they are and how they how they fit in yeah sure so I think you know I think probably people are aware of sort of I guess sort of virtual influences you know it's sort of been around a few years now and I think sort of when you start bringing that into the metaverse you know you get the sort of this digital human really and and you know this is sort of distinction i don't know if anyone sort of watched the matrix but you've probably heard of the term agent in matrix that's actually a sort of technical definition so digital humans in the metaverse are agents um when we are ourselves in the metaverse we we have avatars so sort of agents and avatars and, and the digital humans are ones that are kind of controlled by computer algorithms or ai and i think you know the, this is just sort of this sort of next generation, I guess, sort of virtual influencer now. And I think I actually put a post out on LinkedIn today about, um, you know, what, you know, the, the big hype at the moment is sort of chat GPT and, and you know, this AI is just giving these sort of digital humans such great abilities now, you know, to be able to you know, not only sort of generate nice photos and videos, 
mm. sort of quality video, realistic videos of humans, you, you can now you know, adopt that as a brand and people can talk to that virtual influence of influence or digital human that can kind of represent your brand and you can sort of create it in a way that people can have conversations with it and I think you know the big thing here as well is I think it's this sort of you know, perhaps I think probably some of sort of us older people it is sort of you know it does feel like a little bit strange these, these sort of virtual digital humans sort of and, and people sort of and they be influencers and but you yeah. know it's sort of like it, it is becoming really real it, it sort of it feels a bit weird to us but actually it's really the norm for the sort of whatever next gen we're on at the moment you know like my sort of you know my kids are sort of spending their all their money on virtual goods already and it, and and mm. these sort of digital humans that they're, they're part of their lives they're, they're real you know they're they're mm. meeting people mm. for the first time in virtual these characters are so realistic now they're, they're sort of interacting with them virtually so yeah it, it's mm. sort of that it's a really big part of the sort of metaverse just yeah. sort of us being ourselves as avatars and these digital humans alongside us. There's 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 that aspect, isn't there? You can you can create a digital um version of yourself, your your avatar as you say, and then um yeah. you know you get people like um like the bottom right Michaela who's got I mean how many followers on Instagram? I can't even remember. It's it's millions, isn't it? And and yeah. the the company that actually created these um these characters are, you know, are like are, are basically their agent you know, well agents in the traditional sense of the word, as in, you know, they they have a fee, they can do a job and they can be hired out to brands and so on. Um and then you've got others that are creating their own brand ambassadors uh from mm -hmm. scratch. I think the technology that's coming out of places like um, you know, Unreal Engine, Epic Games, etc. At the moment, is enormously yeah. powerful um, and lifelike. Like the, you know, the whole Matrix thing was 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 re really interesting, um, just to sort of see how that's evolving. Um, yeah, and we, I mean, you know, from marketing point of view, we've started to see some of the sort of more practical aspects of that. So, you know, things like the Synthesia platform and so on that we've adopted enables us to create. So, you know, you talk about some of these things and they feel like they're sort of, you know, in another universe, another, you know, thousands of miles away or costing sort of, you know, enormous budgets. But actually, some of the digital human, um, you know, aspects that you can translate into real time video by, by just you know adapting adopting some of the uh, the new technology that's out there and powered by um, artificial intelligence means that you can have you can basically do text to speech in any language so you know for us as, as marketers in in some of the more sort of traditional environments in b2b and so on that's a massive a ma massive game changer really it's uh, it, it enables us to give sort of lots of you know it gives us a lot of flexibility and the ability i think to create content that breaks new boundaries but to do it in a way that's you know practical and accessible and and is kind of here and now um cool um so yeah here's another big question for you <laughs> apart you from sort of you know yeah sitting on a beach somewhere in the bahamas where do you think we're going to be so what do you, what what about the future for the metaverse and so on what do you think that's going to look like yeah, I mean, I think if you actually gone to the next slide, we've got, got some sort of visuals. But I think, you know, this is it, I think, at the moment. There's a lot of, you know, we've got some great technology at the moment. And, you know, it is in our lives. But I think there's technologies on the way that are just going to bring it increasingly more and more into our lives. And I think, you know, you sort of look at the headset form factors of today. I'll go back to the big boxes we were wearing sort of eight years ago. Um, you know, it's it's really sort of now sort of becoming sort of accessible. And, you know, the Quest headsets, great headset, very affordable, great technology in it. And and it's, it's accelerating, you know, we, we've got, you know, Meta's investment at the moment, they, they've got getting a bit of a hard time at the moment mm. but the amount they've done for AR and VR and mixed reality in the last sort of year the amount of money that they've put into that industry and you know they're not alone they're, they're sort of they're the ones sort of getting in the press at the moment but but everyone's pushing you know Apple are doing things maybe you know they, they keep mm. quiet about it I think that they're they're just waiting for that Apple moment that they're so good so, at. Which so they're going like, to come is, in and <laughs> is the tech ready? Is the tech ready? Do you actually want to wear it? Is it going to make yeah. you look cool? And then they come out of it, right? Um, so it's sort of it's it's that journey, but it, I do feel it's 
accelerating it, it's it's with us now and i think you know it's exciting you know we, we're going to see some great stuff i mean i think the you know the smart glasses mm. they're, they're really going to change our lives when they come out i think that you know the sort of smartphones not the best device for a lot of the sort of applications we use it for you know walking down the street bumping into things um no, trying to drive no. your car don't you don't use it in a car um but you know the, these sort of things it's um you know that once you've got that sort of with you and and those sort of connect to the metaverse so you know anyone sort of heard of sort of nantic they're sort of behind things like pokemon go but mm. they're, they're really pushing what they call the real world metaverse and i think in a way that might actually almost enter our lives perhaps a little bit before that sort of um ready player me sort of end goal yeah. metaverse i okay. think you know that, that sort of ability to put the glasses on walk down the street and, and have that sort of mixed reality you know this sort no, of we're, seeing social, what, you know, no, we're seeing some other stuff as well is that how you mean yeah yeah and i think you know it's worth sort of probably just that i'll sort of use the term mixed reality there and again so that's okay. not everyone's sort of aware of that but mm. the mixed reality there's the sort of separation there is you know ar is about sort of overlaying information mixed reality not only overlaying that information it's been able to interact with it and you know the quest again has got this sort of Mm. good for where it's at you know sort of you can use your hands you can touch virtual objects it the headsets are getting this understanding of the world around them so you know if you're, mm. if you're a brand you know you're walking down the street you can place you know virtual goods information um yeah. so you know it's kind of the, the marketing application there when, when we sort of enter this real world metaverse yeah. is quite a thing to kind of sort of use really yeah. so yeah no it sounds really powerful so when are we all going to be wearing smart glasses then do you reckon a couple of years time or are we going to give it a bit longer it's than that? a difficult one i i i think the i think the headset for the next couple of years i'd say is probably the mixed reality i think that's that's okay. now the new yeah. reason to go out and buy a buy the latest vr headset that they're sort of progressing right. that technology quite fast i think yeah. i've used a lot of the AR glasses or sort of out in the over in america last year sort of trying some of the sort of new lens technologies and it just feels like there, there's probably a few years mm. in those yeah i mean it's interesting because some of it you know that's i guess if you want the visuals but there is sort of some movement now with just cameras and audio where you know it's, it's still sort of adding but i think really yeah. that that sort of big tech could be sort of five years off perhaps interesting oh well good good right so We've looked at a lot of examples today and I have to say that some of them are sort of quite out there in terms of, um, you know, the, the Nike stuff and the, the gaming examples. So can you give us some examples outside of that, maybe things in a more sort of business environment? I'd love to yeah. sort of... Yeah, sure. I think that. this is the world we're sort of living at the moment sort of as a business. So, you know, this is a nice, I guess, a nice example. I, I like this example. This was, um, this is actually for a company to sell they sell laboratory equipment um and they got sort of quite hit by the sort of the pandemic that their, their sort of sales mm. process was was quite sort of hands-on it was going to see the customer with the product mm. in their lab kind of sort of sales process and that mm. got replaced by the the sort of the zoom calls and the teams calls and it's sort of like, okay right i'm trying to sell i've got my brochures and the manuals and trying to mm. sort of show you pictures and 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 you know lab laboratories care about things like you know where's the plug socket in relation to the front yeah. of the thing and and this kind of sort of is quite a sort of hard thing and it got quite messy again sort of every sort of sales rep doing their own thing so mm. we sort of replace this and this is a great project we work very closely with, with the clients sort of over up here sort of developing the solution um mm -hmm. and we sort of ended up you know we've got this sort of virtual environment where they can explore you know it's, it's pitch theater really but they can sort of explore this environment and they mm. can customize that environment as well if they're going to see a particular customer they can you know have the right selection of products ready to go before they go there um yeah. or do it as in cool that's, that's the other way they sort of use this um so there's a bit of sort of fear to there but then we've mm. created what we refer to as digital twins and um i guess sort of, you know i quite forget asked actually what's the difference between a 3d <laughs> asset and a digital twin and i yeah. think it's well, when we use that term you know digital twin i think is really what's happened the test got to a point now where, you know even sort of four years ago it was quite hard to do but you can create such realistic 
you know, representations of products now spatially, you know, gone are the sort of videos and the, and the CG renders images. Mm. Um, you know, now we can create these products really sort of lifelike. And so they're very detailed, but also, you know, when you start sort of thinking about simulation, you know, we can, and some of this, the products we sort of developed here have that. So, you know, you can push a button and the lid will open. Okay. You know, um, these types of things. Yeah, we've got some centrifuges and they can do things and dials and yeah. move, you know, that, that kind of sort of simulation deal. That's really for me where you sort of get into that digital twin space. And, yeah. and it's great, you know, they, they sort of use this. They can either go and see the customer with these on a tablet and do it on the tablet or they can mm. do it over a Zoom's call. And you can really sort of entrap the product and move around it, zoom into it highlight yeah. different features and yeah. then the other sort of party trick we've got with it is um they can also use the, the qr code so you can be on the on the sort of the zoom call show a mm. qr code the user can scan that qr code and then have a web ar which is sort of web ars where we can deliver mm. augmented reality without any app download so they get this sort of instant product that they can view right. life size which is a big thing for them it's all like that was a really common thing so when we sort of work with the sales reps on this it was actually you know what's how big is this product and mm. so you scan that qr code you can see it life size so yeah, it's just really nice experience and then we sort of all these things like all the documents and manuals we just sort of put them they're all still there but we sort of yeah. collect, put those all together and they're, they're just sort of yeah. they've got almost like a shopping cart so you, it's, as you're sort of nice. talking through this great looking experience so, yeah. oh, you, you like that one, right? Add this manual. Let's not get it on screen. Let's just add it to the cart. I'll send it to you after yeah. kind of thing. And nice. so, it's, yeah, it's just a nice application where it's sort of making the difference. And, and, and you know, we're sort of in the third iteration now of this product. So. Okay, interesting. So, yeah, very much the sort of digital environment of a, you know, it's, it's an amazing. I think when people have got a, a practical, you know, a real product. Let's also just yeah. share uh, another example that you mentioned as well, which is more yeah, so this is, academic. This is sort of, um, and again, this is actually sort of virtual reality collaboration platform. So again, you, you sort of think about the previous example, once you, you can also start actually having collaborative experiences with that. And I think, you know, mm. that's what I think where we'd love to get that platform as well. But this is, a, this sort of um, application was built, born out of a, a, a sort of relationship, actually. We've got some good Sort of relations with, with colleges at the moment there's a college called usp college but we we were sort of involved with a you know we, we sort of collaboratively sort of built a virtual production studio together which is sort of part of our kind of it's very useful for us and, and very yeah, useful for them but we, we yeah. sort of when we did that we, we sort of found this almost sort of gap i guess you know we, a lot of people sort of now producing immersive content and the reason sort of colleges are so involved at the moment is it is it's you know everyone knows the metaverse is coming and, and sort of you know immersive content production is a really big thing in education now so yeah but it sort of was born out of the, well how do we use this content what do we do with it um and mm -hmm. so we've actually sort of collaborated now to sort of build this virtual platform which is sort of is teaching focus this one but again it could be mm -hmm. sort of used for different applications but it is allowing you know just i think it just demonstrates the value of this you know even as a student just just bringing a digital twin into a classroom and being mm. able to stand around it is great, you know, put the sort of wind turbine down there and you sort of, you know, kind of a wind, wind turbine in your classroom. So even just sort of bringing an asset in, you know, we, we're not trying to sort of replace teach, teaching, I should add, we, we're sort of no. trying to enhance, you know, let, let's, let's bring the engine into the classroom. Let's take the cover off. Let's see inside it. You know, we can do anything with that asset. Um, and yeah. I think, you know, this is just the power of, you know, this on a sort of, but where you can kind of use it again, sort of enterprise. We're doing it sort of similar types of what we have been for the last eight years, really, but these sort of mm. applications where you can sort of experience products and services virtually is just so powerful, really. Yeah, and I was just thinking about, you know, the application of this type of thing for maybe events or, um, you know, ways of meeting, you know, getting sort of yeah, yeah. together. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, know, there's a lot of people doing that. We're always things. looking for ways of connecting with customers. This could be a way to bring people yeah. into an environment where they they can have a collective yeah. experience. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. Um, that's absolutely fascinating, Ben. And I guess what I just wanted to sort of wrap up on um, is really the advice that you would 
offer to marketers. So obviously we've seen a huge amount of, um, you know, some really cool things today, but mm-hmm. you know, where, where would you start? How do you get involved in it? What do you do? Yeah. I think we touched on a couple of times. Actually, I think there's a lot, there's a lot going on at the moment. Um, and it is just, I think it's just focus on, is there, okay, there's something there, right. That I could potentially use for marketing. I think it's just sort of, you know, it's looking at that and actually sort of, having that little extra sort of can I use it you know thinking it through is it is it going to suit my audience how accessible is it is a really big thing if you're sort of using one of these technologies is it accessible and I think a lot of that understanding actually comes out of you know giving it a go and I think that's the first step for anything really it really is sort of dive in give it a go mm, and mm. quest 2 headsets are, you know they're very affordable it's a yeah. great sort of starter headset to go and try out some virtual reality and get a feel for these technologies and it's sort of you need to get a bit of an understanding and then it's sort of then just thinking about that kind of marketing application you know what mm. will it do you know can i actually reach your you know although it's really good can i actually reach mm. my customers with it don't, don't kind of sure. forget the basics really i think mm. I, you know from my side i think you know there's a massive amount of tools and and opportunities now that have you know come out of the gaming world come out of the movie world come out of sort of you know there's advances in technology that are now much more accessible to us so we can create you know a a digital character that represents our brand completely how we want it to be we could give them a role in the business we can have them speaking to customers and and doing doing kind of real real work um but for me it just comes down to also making sure that we're not just doing it for the sake of technology that we're meeting a business need and we're remembering who our audience is and what their likely response is going to be to some of these um initiatives and making sure that you know we're connecting with them in the right way so if the audience is in the metaverse or is keen to be in the metaverse then yeah it makes a huge amount of sense um and if it doesn't so be it and that's when my doorbell rings so that's always going to be interesting um so i guess from a sort of a wrapping up point of view um yeah just to sort of i suppose put things sort of in in summary now you know we've we've there's a huge amount of creative tools that we've all got access to and and they're now becoming much more sort of you know open accessible you know we can download and play around with unreal engine we can uh, like you say get a vr headset and and start to sort of um you know dive into it that way um and you know the the limitations that we've previously had particularly around for example creating video you know if you wanted to set a video in the sahara desert you probably had to go to the sahara desert or or mock it up now you can kind of just do it from a from a virtual point of view so that sort of storytelling um gives us you know enormous uh, opportunities and and the ability to to sort of translate content and and have it sort of you know using ai to translate it and localize it and so on um is is massive um but yeah we just obviously look to try and stay true to our marketing sort of principles and uh, and and kind of um make sure that we're addressing the needs of our audiences um ben did you want to add anything to that in terms of the sort of summary and where we're at yeah i think it's just I guess work with experts as well you know, don't be afraid to ask with these new technology you know really sort of go in and, and sort of you know understand them and again sort of people like myself you know on linkedin you can sort of follow mm. the content and you know i'm always around sort of always happy to love talking about this stuff and sort of answering questions i think it's sort of you know engage with, with the technology and but don't be afraid to sort of ask experts and work with experts as well when you're doing this Definitely so. And as I did say, um, we had a limited sort of ability to um, to share content and examples with you today. We've got some other ones to share. So if people wanted to have a look at those, they can click through on the from the QR code to link to our website. And there's just a short form and then we'll send you some some more examples by um, by email to follow up with that. Um, And also feel free to connect with I'd, I'd highly suggest connecting with Ben because I think you'll get a lot of information there about what's happening with the metaverse I try and share content around those things as well but also to do with um, you know my futures of marketing and, and what's coming down track so do please feel free to to connect with us both um, and as I said that information 
um, that we can sort of follow up with is uh, is available if you click through to our landing page. So, so that is where we are. So yes, I don't know, Phil, if you wanted to to pick back up again. I think Phil's disappeared, Virginia. So um, I'll step in and, and do uh, some <laughs> questions, and we'll see if we can get Phil back uh, back That's online okay. um, at some point. But um, we finished him I'll, off. I'll it's I'll, uh, great I'll, I'll, I'll crack on with some questions. We've had uh, loads of questions come in, so um, thank okay. you so much for the viewers um, that have really engaged with this and um, oh. put in some brilliant questions. So, um, so I'll, I'll just uh, dive straight in. So, um, okay. first question we have is: um, What industries do you think will benefit most from AI, etc., going forward? Uh, we would love to help clients start integrating the next generation of technology, but we want to ensure that we get it right. Um, so does it, go, I'll go on this. I mean, I think you know yeah, okay. it's very useful. I guess for sort of content production at the moment, but I think it's been very careful where you use that. I think it's it's that sort of authenticity. I guess sort of you know if you're using AI at the moment, it, you know it's, I think it's be very careful around that. And I think you know I sort of touched on it earlier. If we we're sort of talking metaverse, it's you know it's we're really sort of looking at these things like digital humans and and you know how much that's sort of adding to the kind of metaverse experience, I guess, you know, it's in, in, enabling sort of us to actually talk to our digital humans and have conversations with them. So it's extremely powerful technology, but I think it is sort of proceed, again, sort of proceed with caution at the moment. It's sort of, you know, get an understanding of it. They're very early stage, these, you know, chat GPT is very, very smart, but equally it can get things very wrong. So I think you have to be sort of, quite careful about sort of how you engage with it and make, make sure you're sort of using it correctly really. Yeah and I think from an industry's point of view you know we've already seen what an impact it's having or it can potentially have on, on pretty much every industry so anything that can be real can be virtual and you know to a certain extent um, like Ben was showing some of the more sort of physical examples of um, you know creating digital twins and so on that's and, and there's plenty of examples of that in the manufacturing and auto industries that are sort of showing what a, a virtual thing can look like before you actually create the real one so there's there's lots of examples um, across lots of industries um, difficult to pick out on those that are going to be most in, initially impacted I'd say I don't know if that okay, answers your question. Yeah. So um, we'll just uh, we'll ju I'll just sort of kind of go through them in sequence. So some of the questions that have come in, obviously they're going to refer to to the parts that you were talking about in the earlier part of your presentation. So, and one of the questions we have is, um, I can see how the metaverse might be useful for B two C brands, um, but what are your thoughts about how the metaverse might work for B two B brands? And um, are there any examples that you're able to give for that? Yeah, I mean, I, I think well, that actually, the, the example sort of at the end of the presentation was it was a good sort of example of the sort of B two B. But I think as well, it's sort of the um, you know the um, really, I think a lot of that sort of the collaboration, you know, these sort of virtual spaces, the virtual events, sort of leveling that up in the metaverse you know i think there's a lot sort of around that where you know we can sort of find these applications and and sort of have those types of conversations mm. and you know yeah we we sort of see the same thing i think um you know that that collaborative approach but also just being able to connect with uh customers in you know maybe event type environments and or yeah. um you know, we've also seen some really strong examples of digital humans being used in a in a B two B environment. Um, Deloitte have got a strong sort of offering in that space, um, and training uh, AI and digital, and it, it is a virtual environment to to respond to customer questions, for example, and to be able to provide yeah. um, to direct people. I mean, I personally see that the future of like websites is going to be having an interactive experience with a digital human who will ask you where you want to go and guide you in the right direction rather than reading sort of you know screeds of text um but that's that's to that's to come down the line and but that applies to b2b b2c etc uh, so i think it, it is definitely you know the the forefront the forerunners are definitely in the b2c environment um but i think b2b needs to to keep our eyes open as well Okay, brilliant, lovely. Um, next question we have here is, 
Um, is there a chance that there will be oversaturation or metaverse fatigue after staring at a screen for much of the day? Um, do you think that there's a, a, a real chance for digital fatigue um, and resistance will stop it kind of going into the mainstream? Um, I mean, I think that's that's the sort of case, I guess, of sort of any digital technology. I think we're all probably using our smartphones a bit too much. But I, I think as well, I think there is this sort of thing about this just sort of balance of the technology. And I sort of mentioned it earlier, you know, that the AR glasses are coming, things like that. And I think we, what we do do was, you know, we do sort of adjust these technology. We use them at the right time. Hopefully, you know, it's sort of you know, if we're using our AR glasses, perhaps that becomes our out and about technology and we can sort of consume it that way we can take those off at any time um perhaps we've got our vr headset for when we want to go into virtual reality but i sort of figure even sort of at the end game here we'll probably still be sort of want to sit on our sofas and watch a screen you know so i think it's sort of all these sort of technologies you know they come in when they're ready we adopt them when they're useful and um yeah i, th I think you know like anything you gotta there is a sort of you know some of us perhaps will struggle but that that's the case for any tech, you know people playing too many games these things it is it's just sort of you know we, we've got kind of got to get used to it and sort of manage our lives around it really anything from you virginia on that uh no no I, I i was fascinated by what ben was saying really about this kind of um you know this blended realities and being able to sort of utilize the the tools to be able to sort of you know you're not completely isolated and away from the uh, from the real yeah, reality, so, bring so you've back got into reality, yeah, you've got a bit of both going on, which I think is you know for people today that sort of you know walk along the road staring at their phones and that kind of thing, and I, you know I think we've all been guilty a bit of that. Um, it's it's difficult to do, but actually it looks like the technology is going to help us to be a little bit more integrated, not necessarily just one or the other. Brilliant. Absolutely fascinating, fascinating stuff. So um, I think we've got time for one last question as we're, we're getting close to two o'clock. So I think we'll make this the yep. final question. Okay. So uh, do you think it's worth investing in the metaverse if your target audience is 45 to 60? What's, what's your thoughts on that? <laughs> um it's interesting so we, i mean a lot of where we sort of the application of sort of the training space and um you know the, there are very valuable applications in that space you know we, we did recently did a big vr project for um it's actually for truck drivers and i would say actually a lot of the target audience was that sort of older sort of that, that sort of age group and um it was you know it was, but it was sort of this, this training application and there was this sort of oh god we've got going to put on vr headsets and things like this um mm. but actually you know they, they really love the kind of training solution that we built and it, it sort of replaced i guess sort of traditional sort of training experience it was actually quite, quite a dull training experience where they sort of had to go to a room and watch powerpoints and dvds and things like this um and we sort of replaced it with a sort of motion simulation of vr headset and it's almost become a bit sort of gamified with, with with the drivers it's sort of oh you know i got this score and i did you know i did this and we've got eye tracking technology in it so they can sort of you know with the training instructors they can sort of understand um you know the technology so i think yeah you know, i don't think there's any you know i'm 40 i'm by the way mm -hmm. um, so you know I'm, I'm happily using all this tech so you know i, I think it's sort of um yeah there's yeah, it's just when it's right you know when when the tech's right you, you don't necessarily have to have a good understanding but i think that's the best tech is where you can use it that's the, the sort of iphone thing where you can very easy to use and, and these headsets are getting that way you know things like the sort of pass-through technology mm. in the quest mm. headset that's that's a great technology it used to be really sort of trying to put vr headsets on sort of waving your hands around and sort of going into something you didn't quite feel comfortable with but you know the, the sort of mm. pass-through technology allows you to see the real world and you feel that connection and they're becoming far more sort of user friendly um so it's not really just sort of the, the tech people anymore mm. yeah no, i think it's fascinating and, and obviously you know it is sources of course maybe you don't say to people oh you're going into the metaverse you just say look we're setting this up in a different way have this experience and they're gonna yeah. you know yeah. you probably find that they they would uh, they would appreciate it and like you say people like something you know a bit different don't they something that's not just kind of you know sitting watching a watching a screen but yeah 
and if, if anybody wants to um, continue other questions and so on, you know, happily um, myself, well, I would anyway, but yeah, happy to, to pick up on LinkedIn or whatever if you want to have, uh, have further discussions. Well, brilliant. Thanks ever so much, both of you. Um, it's absolutely fascinating topic. Um, I'm absolutely enthralled by it. But um, <laughs> yeah, so um, well, I think I think um, that's all we've got time for really today. Okay. Um, so thank you very much, uh, both Virginia and Ben. As I say, absolutely fantastic uh, presentation and uh, really insightful. And it's an absolutely uh, fantastic um, topic to, to really delve into. So um, we do hope that you've enjoyed the session um, and found it really interesting um, and worthwhile. That just leaves me to say a final thank you uh, to both Virginia and Ben. As I say, great presentation. Thank you ever so much for your time on the webinar today. We really do appreciate it. And uh, thank you to you, the audience, for watching today. Um, we do hope that you've enjoyed the session, found it really useful. So um, we'll say take care, everybody. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again soon at our next Marketing Club webinar. Thanks ever so much. <laughs>